is Net Video at the Cross Media Lab in Singapore. I'm Jason Romney and talking to Dale Herigstad from Schematic, which is based in Los Angeles and one of the world's most successful and innovative digital media agencies. Dale, welcome to Net Video. Nice to be here. Dale, can you describe what you do at Schematic, a little about the company's evolution, and then we'll talk about your impressions of the Cross Media Lab here in Singapore. Uh, I am the executive creative director, that's my official title of Schematic, uh, and I'm basically in charge of all things creative. Uh, and I also hold uh, uh, the, the charge for leading the vision of the company as well, uh, particularly in a lot of, we're particularly involved in a lot of new media, so uh, the new media projects that we do, uh, which reach further into the future, uh, those are things that I'm leading the charge in. So. The Cross Media Lab, th I, this is my second uh, Cross Media Lab. I attended the, uh, the, um, the Melbourne uh, Cross Media Lab last year. I, my impression is, uh, has been, is still good. I mean, it was good last year, which is why I came back, and it, it's good this year. I, I, I really appreciate what's going on uh, in this. In particularly, one of the things I really like about it is its international flavor. It brings people from a lot of parts of the world together. And... Uh, uh, trying to solve problems uh, in a very open atmosphere, people people very open to helping each other uh, and really moving ahead. At this time in new media, we're all trying to figure it out and we figure this out together, learn from lessons learned from other parts of the world. That's a good thing. So, so Dale, uh, Schematic is based in Los Angeles, although you have offices in places like New York and Atlanta. Los Angeles, though, is at the epicenter of the crossover between the film industry, the TV industry, the games industry, and to some extent the mobile content industry. So you have an opportunity to see the flashpoints of the industry, such as the electronic program guide, and design interfaces for it, some of which you've shown here at the Cross Media Lab. Can you talk to us a bit more about that? Yeah, particularly for Schematic, uh, there, are, there are, of course, many other companies working in this space, but we try to look at this uh, particularly from a real quality of design and quality of technology. And when you converge those two things together it, and really think about the user experience, it, you can create some new things. And we're, we're trying to look at everything, whether it's a user experience around, as you mentioned, navigating for content on television or an EPG, or it's navigation uh, around programming, or it's creating portals of information uh, clearly, being in Los Angeles, we, we, we're in, the, in, in one of the hearts of this, this kinds of media. But, but we can look at that, and on our role at Schematic is to really look at that and make it as best, the best that it can be. Because it, it's, we, we've all, some of the interfaces are not what they could be, and we're trying to make the, the medium better, which will push things forward. At Schematic, you have the opportunity to develop the three-dimensional navigational interfaces for some of the world's most exciting products, such as the Xbox 360 coming out soon and so forth. What challenges have you found in developing interfaces that can bring together, say, television content with broadband content? Uh, in particular, the challenge are, challenges are, are quite specifically uh, that we're stepping into a lot of new territory. Uh, we clearly have to test what we're doing, which we do. We're user test uh, what we're doing. But when you step into what I, uh, uh, when you test against kind of these new ideas, uh, uh, you often hit what I call the wall of the new. So you have to look at user testing and other things from, from another standpoint that at some point uh, you encourage your clients to step for some vision and, and try the new thing with, with the belief that it's better. So Dale, you've shown a number of the interfaces that Schematic has developed and you've shown how, for example, the uh, control interface on a cell phone, a mobile phone that's capable of displaying video, is now able to control the behavior of a digital video recorder back at home, for example, when the Windows Media Center is uh, in question. What sort of innovations are you finding here in Singapore, which is also a hub of, of innovation? I mean, what I like about Singapore is that it's is partly that it's a hub, it's a hub for this area, just geographically. I mean, it's it's a it's a connecting point uh, to other uh, to many other countries in the in the region. Um, and in terms of its technology, uh, uh, there's there's some great technology here in terms of what's done in wireless and and in other and other technologies. Uh, there's an openness to bringing those those things together. I don't think any particular 
country or part of the world has really solved all those problems of putting those things together. That's that's the frontier that all of us together in the world are stepping into. And uh, but I think there's some potential here for 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 this particularly the particular place of Singapore that could actually help solve some of those things. How have you found the world of 3G and also the DMB, the Digital Multimedia Broadcasting World, which is part of DAB, are they different to what you have experienced within the United States and developing in ways that inspire you in turn? Being from the U.S., I am very inspired to be here, and it's it's what I enjoy about traveling to other parts of the world because uh, the U.S. market is is not ahead in some of these technologies. I mean, I mean, I think that the in uh, cell phone technology and uh, and applications and and devices. Uh, I just came from the rest of the exhibit floor here, where we spent some time in the exhibit floor, and I'm kind of uh, I, I'm I'm sort of envious of those great some of the products that that we don't have there yet, and are and we're we're sort of still building up to, to where it is. So it's, it's great to kind of be here and see kind of a, the future, what's coming for the U.S. actually. What are some examples that caught your eye? Uh, some of those are well, some of the devices, some of the cell phones themselves, which are are are, are more advanced and uh, and and actually the, the, just the network itself. I mean, uh, uh, are, I, I I'm not I'm not speaking out of turn to say that in the United States we, our, our, our 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 transmission coverage for cell phone is not as good as other as is in Europe or as is here. And uh, and uh, I sort of long for that better quality of transmission so that we can have, you know, good solid signals wherever we are, which is a requirement once we move to. I mean, I I want to have a connection if we're going to be using 3G. So the X Media Lab brings together business people, digital media creatives, strategists from so many areas: film, TV, games, mobiles. What sort of questions are people asking you as a mentor? Is there anything that surprised you? Some things that that come out of the unique uh, presence here of so many different nationalities, for example? Uh, well, one of the nice surprises was that th things that I, as some of the projects which, uh, uh, as the, the, the way this works is that as a mentor, we, uh, I move around and I speak to each of the projects. And some of them may be a project that's not necessarily in my discipline. But I'm finding there's always something to add to that. Uh, if it's new media, if it's, a, if it's a new media project, uh, I can add a lot just in, in the thinking for interface, which applies to really anything that's interactive. It's, so there, there is an interface involved, and uh, we've done a lot of thinking and a lot of work around that. Um, but I, I, I think that uh, the international quality is really great, just to see what's going on somewhere else. And also, there's there's a cultural, you know, wrap around some of this that's different in parts of the world that we all need to be sensitive to. And it's, I just had a discussion about use of color, for example, which is in Asia there are, there are clearly uh, more more backgrounds behind different color usages, which are not maybe necessarily what's going on in the United States. So. Uh, those of us who are designing for an international audience, we need to think about all those things so we're sensitive to our audience. Dale, you won three Emmys for your work for things like the multimedia work that you did for the Winter Olympics. Are you finding it's harder to be noticed now that the state of the art has advanced to such a sophisticated level than it was in the early days of the industry, or does true quality still shine out very clearly? Uh, well, I, I like to think that, that true quality does come out. I mean, good design, and it's, uh, uh, I, I can hear that in an audience. When, when you present something or you see something along with an audience that that's really has good design, people do respond, and I, and I believe that the audience wants good design, and that's, that's the champion that I try to bring. That's the flag that I wave in this industry. Uh, and I'm not the only one waving it. I mean, it's in the answer to the question about uh, w whether there, there's, there's more, I'm, I, 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 and, there are more people who are good designers around the world, and I, what I enjoy is meeting those people and learning from them uh, from other parts of the world. Uh, um, that, that's that's exciting. What sort of uh, lessons do you think the U.S. market holds for Asia? Um, I, that's a hard one to answer. Uh, um, uh, I mean, th there are certain lessons in inter interface and interactivity specifically, which is sort of the field that I'm in, which I think some things that we've learned uh, that we can be helpful with. That's what I've seen here, is that like, where, whereas in some of the projects that I've seen, uh, they're, they're stepping into some territory that we have some experience in from the U.S. market, uh, uh, we can help with. So I'm very happy to share some of that knowledge base. Are there any surprises 
are there true surprises that are situations or, or factors or questions that you've never encountered that are coming out of the way that uh, the regulatory or legal or technological or network systems in Asia are evolving? Um, I don't know that I can, I've, I've picked up anything like that uh, necessarily. Hmm. No, so. um, in coming years, there are going to be so many changes in the industry. What are the key ones that you think are what people should be thinking about today, and what are some of the solutions to the problems of the future? Uh, clearly, the thing that many of us are wrestling with all around the world uh, is that you have a lot of devices and a lot of uh, devices in different media. You've got mobile devices, different kinds of mobile devices, cell phones, PDAs, you have computers, you've got televisions, you've got different kinds of transmissions of all of those. Uh, what everyone is trying to do is to put those together and let those 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 devices and things that we work with talk to each other in a sensible, easy manner. That's currently the state is still very difficult. I mean, uh, to connect those devices, it's possible, but it's it's uh, takes a manual and it's not as slick and easy. I think what ten years from now, hopefully, this has been uh, that standards will will evolve and and all of this will be much easier than it is now. Uh, because I believe that that user experience is so critical that particularly mobile devices to the home, home to the car, car to the wherever we are, car to the plane, uh, we are now a mobile society. And, and to connect all those things together seamlessly is the goal, but we're a long ways from it. But, uh, we're all working hard to make it happen. There's talk about how uh, outsourcing is occurring by U.S. companies to Asia far more now than previously. Do you think that that's a big issue? Um, I, I, it's a big issue in, in terms of that it's it's being done and it's and it's something to, to think about and it, and it's successful in certain certain ways. What I like about it is when 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 both parties win from that. I mean, uh, uh, if you outsource that both both ends of that that chain are, are winning from that in that process, um, it, it's a part of the global. Business market. I mean, it's uh, and where people find economical and efficient and uh, ways of using talent wherever it is. Uh, it's just going. It's, it's a fact, and it's going to happen. And I, um, uh, I think our role is just to make it happen in a way that benefits for for everyone. So. Can you describe one of the uh, current cross-platform, cross-device brand development uh, projects that you're working on? For example, Battlestar Galactica. You've been heavily involved in that. What sort of issues have come up as that brand franchise has been taken from the television series into the films, the games, all the different mobile manifestations? Yeah, well, that that particular one, I think one of the most interesting things about that was to put it, it, what, what I would call uh, the invention of, of a new medium. Uh, it was taking, converging two mediums together. So one of the most interesting parts was when uh, it, 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 the concept was using a game box like the Xbox, the future Xbox, plugged to your cable and to broadband, and you would have the ability to, uh, during during a game, I mean, a game, a, do a, do, during a fight scene, let's say, in a uh, in the miniseries, you could be plunged directly into there and participating a, as a game experience. So you're combining different kinds of media together in, in one place. Very interesting experience. We also did an experiment with. Um, with Bravo, these are through the American Film Institute. Uh, we did a uh, experiment uh, a year ago uh, around the show Bravo's show Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, which has, of course, a lot of product placement and product and advertising implications in it. Uh, and what was interesting about that project was that it was also uh, an interesting one to, to kind of combine different uh, device experiences or medium experiences around that. Uh, it, th there was an experience you could do just with a cell phone. Uh, before the show, during the show, and after the show. You could do another one if you had a Windows Media Center uh, and a cell phone where you could you know, use the cell phone after you watch the show enhanced on a, on a media center and it automatically would transfer uh, marked content that you had to your cell phone. You could take it into the kitchen and cook the salmon that was that you'd seen in the salmon recipe or you could uh, use it shopping with tips you'd gathered from there. So these devices become... Uh, Gathering devices of information and things you've seen on or ads or anything uh, from, from your television experience. So you're starting to really combine these devices together in, a, in an interesting way. Um, that was a really interesting experiment. Hmm. 
how are those sorts of experiments now going to take form as repeatable, sustainable, scalable projects in the future? Once the excitement of innovation and experimentation has passed and people want repeatable business models and things that aren't going to get out of control, what's the migration process to that? Well, a lot of it has to do with really carefully monitoring these things. I mean, uh, uh, in this business, we come up with ideas, uh, like these examples you mentioned. Uh, we test them. We, we put them out to market. But then you continue to monitor them because our job is to, to see what the customers want. That's really, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do. And if, we, if we've arrived at something that, that, uh, uh, that, we, that we actually can see through, through data that the users do want these, it, they will, they'll expand and grow. But, I mean... Uh, there will always be ones as well that we think is a great idea, but maybe it's not something the users want. We've all seen this, but I think it's constantly monitoring this through through testing and through through market research to, to see that we're doing what our customers want. Dale Herrickstad from Schematic, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks. Happy to be here.